This is a compound microscope and we'll be using this and another microscope called a stereo microscope right from the first practical. Now if you take your practical manual, open it up at practical one and follow what I'm going to say now. This will help you when you come to do this practical and indeed it will help you throughout uh, residential school and the practicals because we'll be using the microscope a lot. So I'm trying to demystify it for you here. So what we have here, as I said, compound microscope. It will take us from uh, times 40 magnification, so that's a four times objective there, and you've got a times 10 objective, uh, sorry, eyepiece here. Then right up, that's 10 times objective, which is 100 times then, 40 times objective, it's 400 times, and then the maximum, which we hardly ever use, use it more in microbiology, is 100 times objective, times 10 is 1,000 times. Now what you might have noticed there as I went up is that the lenses get bigger, and also you will find that this distance here between what will be your specimen and the objective also gets less, okay? Now, one thing that students have difficulty with, we'll be using slides throughout, uh, either prepared slides as in this case, or ones that we'll make ourselves. And the way to actually put them on is, this is a little caliper here. You put it on like that and just hold it with the caliper. Now, some students, the caliper might be a bit loose and they get that underneath, which isn't good. You want it just to hold the actual edge of the slides. And then you can then adjust it with this uh, thing at the side here, which will take us, these are called, what are these called? Uh, little bit squirty things, yep. And they will enable you to find the middle of your specimen. And what other things do we have? As I say, these are the uh, eyepieces. You can adjust it for your eye distance. This is an interpupillary distance. And the other thing that you can do, say, we'll start off with the times four magnification. I'm going to have a look down here now. And you focus here with, first of all, at this low my coarse focus, focus up and down. What I'm actually looking at here is a piece of a section of a piece of wood. And you probably, this is the fine focus here, you don't need it at the lower magnifications. Now, once you've found it and got it into focus, you can then adjust this for your eyes, the interpupillary distance, but also these can be adjusted for differences in your eyes in terms of their focal ability. So what you might do, say, is close your left eye and focus on the specimen with your right. Then close your right eye and focus this eyepiece, turn it anti-clockwise until with your left eye it comes into sharp focus as well. And then that's set up for the differences in your eyes and the distance between your uh, eyes as well. Okay? Now, another thing you might want to adjust is here. Just above the focal things, we've got what's called a condenser foc focusing knob. And this whole unit, I'll just wrap it, wrap it down here. The condenser condenses the light ray towards the specimen. And what you want to do is to have the light nice and evenly uh, illuminating the specimen. So in this case, you turn this all the way up and then just a quarter down so that the light is being nice and bright and focused on your specimen. You can also adjust the intensity of light, see it's coming here from the bulb. On the right hand side you will have a, a power control, just like the dimmer switch at home that you might have. And usually you'd find at lower magnifications like times 4 objective and times 10 which is times 40, you would have the light fairly low down. And as you increase in magnification, now we move it around nice and gently using the neural bits, you don't want to be hanging off the objectives. Go to times 10, and you should find that that is fairly close to being in focus. These lenses are what you call par focal, which means that you should be very close to being in focus after focusing, first of all, on the low mag, moving then up to times 10. Now, a very crucial thing about the microscope is the times 4 and times 10 actually have what's called a stop. That means you can't focus up beyond a certain distance, you can hit stop there. But the crucial thing is, if you go then to times 
40 objective, which is an overall wide location times 400, you do not have that luxury. That means you should never focus up when you're looking down the microscope as such. So you try and get it as close as you can and then just turn this towards yourself to get it into focus. And if it doesn't come into focus very really quickly, then you start again, i.e. you go back down to the next lower magnification, focus there, and then go back to the times 40. If you can't get into focus with that times 40 very quickly, i.e. within a minute or two, don't persevere with it, go back down to the lower magnification. This is another error that students do, they panic, and just try to keep finding things there. When maybe they've gone well beyond what's called the focal distance, Remember, as you go up in magnification, it's really, really small. Okay? Uh, what other things? You probably will not, as I said, need to go up to the times 100 in botany. In fact, I, Jeff and I usually tell students not to because it's, it gets a bit messy, shall we say. You need to use oil for the times 100. And usually you can see all you want to see in plant specimens with from times 4 up to times uh, 40. So we won't worry about that saying you get to microbiology in the next session. Uh, is there anything else that you can think of, Jeff, that I should uh, talk about? Or is that good enough for now? That's it? All right, thank you.